Hey, what's up guys? Chip Walters here, and I'm going to continue on with my multi-channel UV tutorial. And here what I want to do is I want to bake all of these maps into one UV space. And that can be a little bit tricky. So let's first talk about why we would want to do that. Sometimes it's just easier to export objects with one UV set. In fact, you can export as OBJ as well when you do that. The other thing is it's easier to create game assets with only one UV map. Also, a lot of times we want to have our UV maps to have a resolution that's a multiple of 16, like 256 by 256 or 1024 by 1024. And the purpose of this is that GPU and game engines generally prefer resolutions that are multiple of 16. And finally, it can be just simpler in the long run if you're trying to manage a lot of different materials with lots of different UV maps. So why wouldn't you want to do it? Well, in case of complicated models, you find that there's just not enough resolution to bake decals into your actual model file. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. For instance, here we have some really tiny details. And we're not going to be able to bake that unless we create a huge, huge base map, which we're not going to do. But we will make a bigger base map than what we're using currently. So right now we're only using two images. Let's take a look at them. We're using this decal image which as we said previously is about 2048 by 1813 and then we're using this wood image which is 1600 by 901. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to bake just this principal BDF shader. We're going to bake two different channels on here. We're going to bake a diffuse channel so we get all the texture and the color and then we're going to bake a normal map. So how do we do that? select our object, go to UV editing, and we're going to need to create yet a fourth UV map. And I'm going to call this one baked UV. And with that, I will select all. So actually, before I do that, let me just talk a little bit about our texel density here. So if I go in here and let's just select any one of these and just say, let's calculate the texel density. We're at 2.73 for a 1024. We're going to have a, we're going to use this size. So we're at 5.461. And a lot of those are are close to that, right? That's seven, so they're pretty high. So now when I go over here with this new baked UV selected, and I hit the A button, and I say UV, Smart UV Project, I'm gonna use the defaults. Now let's calculate the texel density, and we're down quite a bit, we're half, less than half the size. So we are losing a little bit of resolution here. That being said, I am gonna go over to this image and say new, and I'm gonna make it 2048 by 2048. And I'm gonna turn off the alpha, I don't need that. And say, and I'm gonna call this baked diffuse. Then I'll go back over here and say U, smart UV project, and we have this set up as it is. And so we calculate the density here, we're at roughly almost three for our texel density. And as we remember, texel density just basically tells us how much resolution each one of these polygons or faces is gonna have per the texture map. So now that we have this, we have this baked UV, let's go back over to our layout. So I'm gonna grab any one of these images and I'm gonna drag it down, duplicate it, and I wanna set this to be our baked diffuse. With it selected and this selected, I'm gonna go over to our render engine, I'm gonna choose cycles because we can only bake in cycles. And I'll, in my case, I'll put GPU compute on and we're gonna go down and what are we gonna bake? So I'm gonna go down here and I'll say, I just wanna bake the diffuse. That's all I want. I don't want any lighting information, nothing else. Now that we're ready to bake, we need to turn off our indirect and direct lighting. And then we also need to, let's go back up here and let's grab this little UV map and shift D it and drag it down here because we need to tell Blender what UV set we want to bake to. And so I'm going to go in here and I'll use the baked UVs and I'll drag that right down there. And now with this selected and this selected with the box and this map selected and this turned to diffuse only color, I'll hit the bake button. Our progress will be shown down here and I'll come back when we're done. Okay, so we're complete and let's just zoom in here a little. Let's go to look dev real quick. And you can see we have a bump map here. If we use our Node Wrangler shortcut that we learned from our last tutorial, Control Shift and click, this is the new map, you'll see that this is what, exactly what we have. And even this, we can read some of this. It's not as good as before. Let's take a look at that. If I go over here and hit this, you can see, let's move all the way in. There's the letter Apply To, and I'll hit this one. 
and you can see it's not quite as high. Remember we talked about texel density affects that. So that's the reason why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to shift D, create a new principal shader, and I'm going to move that color right into the base color of that. So now we have this set up and when I hit here, we'll have the lighting set up the way we want it. Now we haven't set up the, the uh, color ramp, so let's just do that. Shift D, we'll drag that down here. We'll drag the color into here and we'll put this into our roughness channel. There we have our object that's been baked with our roughness set up to go and we're using our baked UV channel. There's one and there's two. And you can see as I toggle between them, we're missing the bump map. So let's go ahead and do that next. So I'm going to take this again and I'm going to shift D it and drag it down. And this time I'm going to create a new and I'm going to call this one bake bump and I'll leave it at 2048 also. I want to make sure these are the same and I'm going to hook it up to our UVs, the same UVs and I'm going to select it and then I'm going to go back and make sure that the target UVs we're using has that bump. So we've clicked here. So we've got that selected and we have this selected, which is our baked bump. And over here, I'm going to choose normal and then I'll hit the bake button. Okay. Now we've got this baked, the bump map, which is actually a normal map. I want to change that. And so I need to go shift a vector normal map and we'll put the color into here and we'll hook the normal up to here and then we'll hit this. So you can see that now we have this set up. This is our normal. As you can see, we can add strength if we want to. Something like that. We're pretty good. Okay. And one thing I need to mention this last bake I did while I was in the viewport material preview viewport shading, which is an EV mode, but it's just important as long as we have cycles set up in our rendered view. So I can bake in the material or look dev mode, but I must have cycles set up in the rendered mode. Okay. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to figure out how to do the foil. So let's do that next. So for the foil, we're going to need to be able to calculate the alpha channel or the transparency channel that the foil elements reside on. That's going to be the key part of that. Once we have that, as we can see in here, this alpha channel plugged into the FAC for the mix shader. And because of that, it mixed the foil glossy BSDF with the principal BSDF. And that's how that worked. The easiest way to do that is we're going to duplicate another one of these maps down here. Shift D move it down, get up to the same UV space because we want to be rendering in the same UV space. And I'm going to delete it and I'm going to call it baked foil and I'm going to call it trans for transparency, but I'm not going to need the alpha channel here. And you think you might want to, because we did earlier, but we're not going to. And I'll explain that here in a second. Okay. So now once we have that, we'll need to go back up here. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to create an emissive shader. So we'll go to shader emission and we're going to drop that right in here. And I'm going to take the alpha channel of this and put it right into the color. And then I'll use our node wrangler trick, control shift to click here. And you'll see we have black and white right there. Next, we're going to go back down to this baked foil trans. We're going to select it. And with these two selected, we'll go over to our bake settings. And now we're going to bake our emit. And that's very simple. We hit the bake button and now we're done. And if I control shift click here, we have the exact same thing. So now that we have this, I'm going to go back up and let's go ahead and construct how we want this to look. I'll take this and I'm going to move it over here and let's take our mix shader and let's shift D it, move it down here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our emission shader and I'll take this glossy B BSDF. Let's go ahead and we'll move these like this. I'll duplicate him and then we will just plug our BSDF into this channel here. We will plug our principal BSDF into this channel and for our FAC, we're going to use the color from here into the FAC and then we can hit click on this and we'll see we're done. Now this is a little bit dark and if we look at the other, let's go ahead and look at this other one. It's a little lighter and the reason for that. I think we jacked up the normal a little bit high. Let's go back to 1.2 or something like that and see if that doesn't help us out. There we go. That looks a little better. Okay. So again, let's take a look at some of these maps. I'll go back into UV editing and I'll go here and I'll hit the control space bar full screen mode. So here's our baked diffuse map. You can see that what that looks like. Here's our baked foil map. You can see what that looks like. Here's our baked normal map. Let's uh, 
tab out of that. So those are our three maps. Each map is 2048 by 2048. So they're quite a bit larger. So remember when we started this, we started with only two maps. We did the first with just two maps, which is this texture one, which is 1600 by 901. And then we used this decal one, which was 2048 by 1818, 1813. The point I want to make is that the original way we did this was much more efficient. And when you're rendering in Eevee, the fewer maps with the less resolution you use to get same or better results is going to give you more graphics memory to add. Because remember that at some point in Eevee, you'll run out of graphics memory to render in. The other point I'll make is that as we go back to our layout mode and we start looking at some things here, you know, and this is our three 2048 by 2048 maps. And, and this is the two original maps. And you can tell by looking at them that even using the smaller original maps, we got a much higher resolution. Still, this only uses one UV set. And if you want to, you can just delete everything that you're not needing and just use the nodes that are hooked up to this and you'll have this set up and ready to go. So one thing that's really important that you do is you need to save these files after you bake them. And the best way to do that I've found is to go into the image editor and go into image and say, save all images right now. I've, I just did it a minute ago so we can save them. And then after that, I'll go in and say external data, automatically pack into blend, save it, control S and then say file and say revert. And you'll see that they're back and ready to go. So I hope that's helpful and I look forward to seeing you online.